All right, so if you're a personal trainer, boot camp owner, fitness professional, then you are probably, if you have not yet already, going to be confronted with the Peloton objection, where somebody says, I have a Peloton, I'm thinking about getting a Peloton, and then that might fly in the face of your services. So I'm going to give you some tips on how to overcome the Peloton objection, both in a close and with your own mindset. So if you're a personal trainer, I'm gonna ask you to do one thing. If you find this helpful, please click on the like button. All right, if you know other trainers, please share it. And then also, if you'd be kind enough to put your location in the comment section and give me an idea of what shutdowns are like in your area as it relates to gym, social distancing, restrictions, how it's affected your business and things like that. Because I also want to get a fair amount of information from you guys on how things are looking in different parts of the world. But I actually had a client who has been training with me for nine plus years, and then she mentioned to me that she was looking to get a Peloton. And I initially was a little bit concerned, like, oh man, if you get a Peloton, you're going to end up quitting my boot camp. you're not going to come anymore. And that's not the case. So the first thing that you have to address is your mindset. So if you have a boot camp or a CrossFit or personal training services, you have to understand that for the longest time, as long as personal training has been around, people have paid for both gym memberships, and personal training at the same time. And when you look at the One Peloton website, when you buy it, you can buy it up front for like 2,000 or 2,500, but most people will probably sign up for their monthly access, which is 50 or $65 a month. Not very far off from the gym memberships that they were paying beforehand. So it's not like if somebody has a Peloton, that's a death knell to you that they won't sign up for personal training. So if somebody's interested in getting a Peloton, encourage it. And then you can always say, hey, this is going to be a great way for you to supplement the workouts on days that you're not training with me. You should support it because the more that you act defensive, I think the more likely you are to drive away a client. All right. Now, uh, second scenario, I had somebody call me in uh, yesterday. They were asking about my boot camp and I gave them my rates and they said, well, you know, I understand uh, your rates, but I just bought a Peloton. So, you know, I'm paying something for that right now. And when you get that objection, the main thing that you have to tell them is that the Peloton is great. It's going to be a great way for for you to get a workout whenever you can't meet with me. But at the same time, it's not going to give you the accountability that you need. All right. So it, it gives you data. You know, there is a social aspect to it. You get a library of workouts, but it's not going to say, hey, Mary, get your butt on the Peloton. Or, hey, Mary, I haven't seen you in two days. Like, what's going on? talk to me because you know the personal training industry is a personal thing you know you spend about as much time as a counselor as you do as a trainer and the more that you can drive that home to clients when they talk about oh i'm not going to need you because i have a peloton you know the the better off you're going to be as long as you push the personal accountability aspect um and the community aspect that you get live and in person that is going to be very hard to replace once the restrictions lift and vaccines are you know uh, disseminated then I think you're going to be just fine. So you should not be afraid of the Peloton, all right? Now, the last thing that I would recommend if you want to offer an alternative is to build your own library of exercises. So I build websites for personal trainers. Uh, This is the membership area of my website. I kind of like zoomed it in so you could see, but essentially anybody can sign in. I've created my own library of workouts, and at any point, somebody can just click on a workout, And then they can follow along with their dumbbells, with their kettlebells, whatever the case may be. Um, And then they can do the workout that way. And then you can build an unlimited number of workouts on your membership area. Uh, So as soon as you want to build new workouts, clients can do them. And you can beat the price of a Peloton because once your library is set, it doesn't cost you anything extra to keep it available. So if you want to learn more about the website hosting services that we offer, you can go to teamfitboss.com. It also includes courses on how to succeed as a new trainer, how to study better for the NASM exam, how to start your own group training, how to dominate online training. There's a lot of stuff there. So I definitely recommend that you check it out. If nothing else, sign up for the newsletter so you get more tips like this as we navigate this industry to bring ourselves back to a state of normality. So thank you for watching this. As always, remember, uh, like this video, share it, and then comment below. Let me know. Have you had to deal with the Peloton objection? What are restrictions like in your area? I'll be curious to know. So uh, thank you for watching this whole video. It's like five minutes. I'll see you later. Peace out.